So today's video is going to be all about the band that was the 14th and 15th release on Boss Tunage, who I'm still working with quite a few of them today. And that band is the wonderful Life But How To Live It. So, Life About How To Live It, one of the finest bands ever to come out from Norway, in my opinion, and uh, I hope you agree. Uh, so how did I start working with them? Well, basically, um, as mentioned on the Rise video, uh, we uh, started to work with a German label called RPN, uh, run by a guy called Ansgar. Um, and we were looking at doing the Rise releases in the UK. Uh, and when we sorted out the deal with RPN, um, Ansgar mentioned, well, my next release is that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing the third album by Life Bear Had to Live It from Norway. And obviously I was aware of the band and, uh, and, and a keen fan um, already of like the Day by Day album and stuff uh, I already had. And um, I hadn't seen the band play live, but I'd, uh, you know, I've been listening to their records. Um, so yeah, so the idea of doing Life Bear to Live It on Boss Tunage sounded like a, a fantastic idea. Uh, Ansgar's plan was that uh, they'd done two seven-inch singles for Berry Berry Records in Germany, uh, Green and Burn, and he was going to combine those as a mini CD, uh, and then also do the third album, which obviously would become Ugly. Um, so the idea was that these were going to be the first of the co-releases where our information would be printed on the actual records. With the Rise record, uh, the LP and the 7-inch, we just stick at the stock uh, that came back. Um, so we planned in sort of set release dates and I remember that I think the Green Burn mini CD appeared first. Uh, so even though it was Bostage 15, it came out before Bostage 14 and that must have been in January 1993. <laughs> Not a river in the far, far north of the land So many sleep the sights in desperation Man, that was the kind to accept the life in slavery Feel like my family died for a hundred years or more We swam across the river and we ran We had to wrap a cover in and the boy friend out there I heard he was bound in the room with the bullet all in his hair Yeah, I'm like the one way from America Let me be the day to my joy when I finally get away with America Never made it to America And the plan for Ugly, uh, the album, I believe was to arrive with us in either February or March 1993. Now the band actually did a European tour and came over to the UK. And I seem to remember that Ansgar sent me a whole bunch of t-shirts up as well. And I think, um, apart from having those for mail order, I also had some copies for the band. 
Uh, luckily they were playing in Leicester and I think the venue, it was this tiny little venue in the centre of Leicester, I think it was called the Engine Shed. Um, no idea where we put the gig on or anything, um, but uh, I went along and that's where I first not only saw the band play live but also met them. Um, dropped off t-shirts I believe for them at that point. Now when we got the stock from RPN we were expecting to get vinyl copies and CD but we only ever got the CD copies. I think that the album had done really well for them in um, Germany uh, and they'd run out of stock. So what stock was gonna come to us had been used up to cover orders over there and then it was gonna be repressed. Um, so we kind of sent it off, you know, got some really good reviews and it, it, it sold pretty well on CD at the time. You know, I think we didn't have our remaining copies for that long. I don't think we had much leftover stock. Um, but the vinyl version never ever came out, so I didn't actually own the vinyl version for years. Um, I bought it a lot later. So obviously the, the CD came out sort of a, like I think the ugly CD in about February or March 1993. Um, I do remember um, that uh, the lovely Dickie Hammond uh, stopped with me in Leicester in about August 1993. It was actually after Leatherface played the Reading Festival uh, and on his way back to Sunderland he actually sort of called me up and asked if he could sort of stop at the flat and stuff like that. And I do remember him in the flat. Not only, bless him, did he break my fridge, uh, which I had to explain to Julie when she came back. I think she was gone down to see her parents. So he stopped at our house and uh, it was a really hot day and he was having his uh, Kansas cider and we hadn't got any ice. So he decided he'd chip some ice from the freezer and then pierced it basically. Um, bless him, so yeah, Dickie Hammond broke my fridge, little known fact for this video. Um, but uh, I remember saying like, yo, all life bad to live, we got talking, and Dickie was a massive fan of Roger's guitar playing. And he said, come on son, let's see the Zeus, guitar Zeus in action or something, and we'll put the CD on, and he was just there going, fucking hell, how's he doing that? And um, I think that was, uh, you know, so uh, Dickie looked up to Life Bound to Live It quite a lot and definitely thought Roger's guitar playing. I think Roger actually has one of Dickie's guitars now, which is quite nice. Um, but yeah, but I remember like loads of people just said to me that this band's brilliant. <laughs> I'll be speaking more about Dickie and the bands uh, that we did stuff with him on on Boss Tunage um, on later videos. There is some cracking live footage actually of Life Bad to Live It back then and I'll, I'll put a little snippet on here if I can locate it um, on, on my hard drive. <laughs>
So obviously I think as I mentioned on the Rise um, video, uh, you know, the communications with RPM became more and more sporadic. So over the years, you know, it, it just all kind of fizzled out. Um, when we started back in 1999, um, we started trading with labels. I discovered that Roger and um, Tom were doing a band called Drunk. Uh, and we used to carry their CD, we used to trade them, we used to sell really well on the drunk and we did talk for a while um, about Boss Tunage doing the, their album The Company Tie, uh, which didn't quite happen. Uh, but then sort of fast forward to 2010 uh, and Roger contacted me saying we're doing this new band called Danger Man. Uh, and when the Danger Man records came in I was blown away and obviously we started doing Danger Man at that point. Uh, later on, Jens, who'd been in Anger Watt, got in touch with me, saying I've started a new band called Castro, which was obviously Katja, the singer from Life I Had To Live It. And obviously I'll speak in detail about Danger Man and Castro on other videos. So when the retro series started to, uh, you know, really sort of be focused on what it was doing, quite early on, I was really keen to do a Life I Had To Live It double CD, which would contain sort of all the albums, some live recordings, because they'd, they'd done a live CD of their very last show. Um, and I remember being really keen and uh, the band were kind of interested, but not that interested. And the reason why the band weren't particularly keen was that they weren't great lovers of CDs. They were kind of vinyl mad. So I suggested that we do vinyl reissues of everything and maybe include a CD in there, not bother with doing an actual CD version. So this all came about in 2015 and um, we put them together and they were released early in 2016. I remember at the time we actually did kind of like a pre-order where you could get all four vinyl releases up front and then you'd get one a month. Uh, the reason we did it that way is that actually in February 2016, that's when I moved 300 miles north to Northumberland. So it was great because I could have actually have everything sort of scheduled whilst we knew we were going to be moving house, which was obviously, you know, we had a lot of stock to move. Um, you know, at the end uh, in 2016, I think we had two storage areas and the house and the shed full full of stock and then we had to get sort of like a double arctic to actually move house and most of it was filled with stock uh, and it cost eye-watering amounts of money to re to uh, to move house so uh, I'm not moving house again for a while if I can help it and um, so yeah so that worked really well and I remember that the reissues just flew out um, and um, you know I think a lot of their early releases have become really hard to come by obviously the ugly LP uh, for one, because it never been, never been released in the UK properly. Um, so it was great to do that, and obviously it's great to still continue working with what I, I think are a phenomenal, phenomenal band. Um, you know, if, if you're not familiar with Life Bear, How To Live It, go, go and check them out, because, uh, yeah, there's something special. That's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.